In this video, we're going to be introducing the convergence test called the integral test. So to get us started, we want to consider the following example. Consider the infinite series that um, is made up of the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Um, this is actually a special um, series that has its own name. This is called the harmonic series because of the connection that it has to music. So let's say we wanted to determine whether this sum, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, um, converges or diverges. So how can we use what we know about the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to show that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n diverges? Okay, so I'm telling you this in fact does diverge. How can we use the fact that this integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx also diverges um, in order to draw this conclusion? So we know that um, our definition of um, series convergence relies on looking at the partial sums. So let's just change this notation here a little bit and think about the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of 1 over i. Okay, so our nth partial sum, Sn, is the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i. Okay. So notice that this is 1 plus a half plus a third plus dot 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 all the way up to plus 1 over n. So let's think about trying to connect this sum here to um, something to do with the area under the curve 1 over x. So if I sketch my curve y equals 1 over x here um, and think about the interval let's say from 1 all the way up to n plus 1, okay? And think about how we um, originally found areas under the curve. We would divide up that region into lots of sub-intervals and look at the area over each interval. So let's take our um, region here. Let's divide this up so that each of our little intervals is length 1, so this is 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 all the way up to n, and then n plus 1. And I'm going to take a left Riemann sum just to see what happens here. So for each interval, I'm going to determine the height from that left endpoint. Okay, so notice the height of that first um, rectangle there is in fact 1. Okay, if we look at our next rectangle here, well at 2, that height is going to be 1 over 2. At 3, we notice I'm getting 1 over 3. Okay, at 4, it's 1 over 4, etc., etc., here, till I get to the end, okay, where that's 1 over n. So notice that the left Riemann sum for this, um, this region from 1 to n plus 1 is actually exactly this partial sum here. So this is, this equals the left Riemann sum for y equals 1 over x um, on the interval from 1 to n plus 1. Okay, so we want to try to use this to set up a little inequality here to help us with this problem of convergence and divergence. So notice the following here. So let's notice that the integral from 1 up to n plus 1 of 1 over x dx. Okay, I want to know how does that compare to my partial sum Sn. Okay, well it looks like our um, Riemann sum here is an overestimate of the actual area under this curve from 1 to n plus 1. So Sn, our partial sum, which we determined is equal to that left Riemann sum, is actually bigger than or equal to the um, integral Okay, from 1 to n plus 1 of 1 over x dx. So if we go ahead and evaluate this left-hand side, notice that this is log of the absolute value of x from 1 to n plus 1, or log of n plus 1 minus log of 1, which we know to be 0. Okay, and n is positive here, so I can just say log of n plus 1. And this is preserving my inequality here all the way down. So notice if I take the limit of both sides of this, taking the limit as n goes to infinity, okay, that would make this the integral from 1 to infinity. So let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of both sides. We also know that our 
um, series convergence is defined in terms of what the limit of the sequence of partial sums is doing. Is that a finite number or something infinite or something that doesn't exist? Well, notice that this left-hand side, the limit as n goes to infinity of log of n plus 1 is infinity. So I'm getting that my limit as n goes to infinity of Sn must be greater than or equal to infinity. Okay, well this means that our limit of our sequence of partial sums is infinite. Okay, so the sequence of partial sums um, diverges, which means our sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n must diverge. Okay, using our definition. So by using our um, definition of series convergence, we were able to use the fact that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx here diverges to show that this sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n diverges. Okay, so this is not a full proof of our integral test, but shows how um, it makes sense that with, with some certain conditions here, um, the behavior of this improper integral is going to be the same as the behavior of this infinite sum. So here's the full statement of the integral test. Suppose that for some positive integer n greater than or equal to 1, you have a function okay, that meets these three conditions that's continuous for all values greater than whatever that starting point is, um, that that function is positive for all x greater than or equal to n, and decreasing for x greater than or equal to n. So notice that our function 1 over x met these three conditions. It was decreasing, continuous, and positive for x greater than or equal to 1. Um, then we let our terms of our series here, excuse me, be equal to our function at just those integer values for k greater than or equal to n, where k is an, an integer. Then we have the following two important parts of our integral test. This says that our infinite series converges if the improper integral converges, and our infinite series diverges if the improper integral diverges. So this is stated in general where I have this big N in the bottom. A lot of the times you just have your sum from 1 that you're working with. Okay. And then this is connected then to the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx, where f of k is equal to ak. So we're just using the associated function here um, within this improper integral. So whatever your starting index is here in your integral, that's going to be what this big N thing is here. Okay. So a couple of important notes. The value of the integral is not the same thing as the value of the series. We have this inequality relationship between our value and our sum that allows us to conclude that they either both converge or both diverge, but they're not equal to each other. So computing this, this integral helps us determine convergence or, or um, divergence, but doesn't help us determine the actual value um, of the sum. One other note, again reminding us that our um, series are not affected by a finite number of terms. So if I have some sum from k equals n to infinity, if that converges, then the sum from k equals 1 to infinity also converges. Okay. Whenever we're going to use the integral test, we have to have these conditions. So before we use the integral test in each example, we'll have to go through and show that our function is continuous, that it is positive, and that it is decreasing. And we'll use some calculus to show our function is decreasing by showing that the derivative of that function is negative. Okay. Again, notice that this is talking about a function meeting these three conditions, and we're integrating a function. So if I have, like I did in my previous example, the sum of, let's see, I'll put it in terms of k, since that's how things are stated in this theorem here. If I have the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k, then I'm going to let f of x be 1 over x that I did before and do a bunch of work with that 1 over x function to make some conclusion about this sum of 1 over k. I'm not going to be integrating 1 over k dk. k is just integer valued. I need to make sure I'm working with a function. So these, these are some notational things to keep in mind. So continue watching these videos to see a couple of examples of applying this integral test.